Hello everyone and welcome back. So in the last video we got started with natural language processing that is our chapter 5 and there we understood tokenization, how we convert text to sequences and sequences to a uh, sequences of numbers and also we understood the padding and how it is helpful to equalize the length of all sentences given to you in the training or the test data set. Now it's time to understand how we can remove stop words and clean the text that we have. So as we all know that there are sometimes some punctuations or some kind of words like a, uh, the, is, it that don't add much emphasis or much clarity to the sentences. So we just are looking for the major words like today, tomorrow, snowy, windy, rainy, like that, right? So there are some stop words that we can actually use and remove from our data set so that it is much easier to train upon. In this section, we look at some real world data sets and you'll find that there is often text that you don't want in your data set. You may want to filter out so-called stop words that are too common and don't add any meaning like the and and but. You may also encounter a lot of HTML tags in your text and it would be good to have a clean way to remove them. Other things you might want to filter out include rude words, punctuations or names. Later, we'll explore a data set of tweets which often have somebody's ID in them and you want to filter out those as well. So basically what we are going to do here is we are going to filter out the words or punctuation or names that we don't really require in our data set. While every task is different based on your corpus of text, there are main three things that you can do to clean up your text program programmatically. So what are these three things to clean your text is first strip out the HTML tags. So as you all know that when we are dealing with some kind of text and uh, we take some text from the internet or just copy paste it somewhere, there are certain times when, when the bold text comes with HTRBR tags and those tags don't add any value to our real world data sets, right? They, these are of no use to our machine, right? So how are we going to remove them from our data set? So here's the code. For that, we use beautiful spoon that makes it straightforward. It's a library and here's how we use it. So we import from BS4 and we import beautiful spoon and we pass in the sentence. Then we use soup.getText. A common way to remove stop words is to have a stop words list and to process your sentences removing instances of stop words. So what are we going to do here is we'll basically have a list of stop words and we're going to iterate through the whole sentences that we have in our data set. And we're going to look for whether this stop word is in the sentence or not. If it isn't, then it's going to pass. If it's there, we're going to remove that stop word, right? So it's basically a for loop with an if statement embedded in it. Let's see the code here. You can see the stop words. I've already marked it for you in yellow. Here are some stop words like uh, about, above, yours, yourself, and yourselves. Then you are iterating through your sentences. You can use code like this to remove the stop words from your sentences. So first we select the sentence. Then we use a filtered sentence where we are going to enter the filter sentences once they are through the for loop. Then for word in words. If the word is not in the stop words, we just enter it or append it to the filtered sentence that we have already initiated above. So filtered sentence plus word plus inverted commas that is some space. 
then we append it to the sentences, right? We append sentences to filter sentence. Another thing that you might consider is stripping out punctuation, which can fool a stop word removal. With just one shush shown, sh looks for words surrounding by spaces. So a stop word immediately followed by a period or a comma won't be spotted. So what he's saying here is that uh, suppose there is written about and then it's a comma again, right? So it's like an about comma and then some word. So what is here is that in each word there are some spaces. So whenever we write some sentence like I'm reading, I am reading. So there will be I, then there will be some space, then am, then space, then reading, then full stop. But there will be no space between reading and full stop. There, th that is where there is some problem because our stop word remover won't be able to remove that thing, right? It won't be able to remove full stop, which has no meaning, but reading has a meaning for us, right? Fixing this problem is easy with translation functions provided by Python string library. It also comes with a constant string dot punctuation that contains a list of common punctuation marks. So to remove them from a word, you can do something like the following. So what are we going to do is we already got the sentences, right? What we're going to do is we are using table equals string dot make trans that is translation, then inverted commas and then string dot punctuation. So words equal sentence dot split sent filtered sentence is this and the rest is same so what we are doing here is as in the previous text where we saw the code under for loop there was just if but before the if they have added one more line here of code that says word equals word dot translate in brackets we have a table so let's understand what we are actually doing here before filtering out stop words each word in the sentence has punctuation removed. So each word has a punctuation which gets removed. So if splitting a sentence gives you a word, it, and with a colon, it will be converted to it and then stripped out as a stop word. Note, however, that when doing this, you might have to update your stop word list. It's common for these lists to have abbreviated words and contractions like yul in them. The translator will change yul to yul where the apostrophe is removed. And if you want to have that filtered out, you need to update your stop words list to include it. Now let's get started with working with real data sources. Now that you have been seen the basics of getting sentences, encoding them with a word index and sequencing the results, you can take that to the next level by taking some well-known public data sets and using tools Python provides to get them into a format that can be easily sequenced. So we'll start with one that has the most say in TensorFlow data sets, that is IMDB data sets. And after that, we'll get our hands on processing a JSON -like based data set and a couple of comma separated values, CSVs data set with emotion data in them. So first, let's get started with getting text from TensorFlow data sets. So here we'll be exploring IMDB review data set that has around 50,000 labeled movie reviews from internet movie database that is short that is full form for IMDB, each of which is determined to be a positive or negative in sentiment. So for example, if I say that I really liked the movie, that's a positive sentiment. And on the other hand, if I say, uh, I really did not enjoy the movie, that's a negative sentiment. This code will load the training split from IMDB dataset and iterate through it adding the text field containing the review to a list called IMDB sentences. So what are we going to do here is that we have a list called IMDB sentences here. Then 
what are we going to do is we are going to load imdb reviews using tfds.load and also we'll wrap it around tfds dot as underscore numpy to ensure that it will load as a string and not tensors because the sentiments or the reviews would be string and we don't want tensors uh, including that it's loaded using tfds dot load right then what are we going to do is we're going to split it to for train so we'll get the train data and for item in in train data we say that if uh, this is the text in the train data then you append it to imdb sentences right so if the item is a text of have of a string then we are going to append it to imdb sentences right once you have the sentences you can then create a tokenizer so what are we going to do here is that first we had a list called imdb sentences then we iterate through the data set that we got called the train data as we have split it earlier and then we found that all the text data that are the string ones that we appended to the imdb sentences next what we are going to do is we're going to create tokenizer to give tokens to each sentence and we fit them as before so tokenizer equals tf dot keras dot free processing dot text dot tokenizer, and we pass in the number of words uh, to be five thousand. Right? Then we use tf tensorflow sorry tokenizer dot text dot dot fit on text IMDb sentences. We pass on the IMDb sentences to the tokenizer to fit on text, and finally we convert the tokens to the sequence. So text to sequences is done using tokenizer dot text to sequences and pass in the IMDB sentences. You can also print out the word index. So which index is given to which word we can also print it out using tokenizer dot word index. So when we print that we'll get that it's too large. So we just get the top 20 words. So we can see that the has one token and has two token a uh, has three. So these are all stop words as we have discussed in the previous section that these the uh, and is to in these are all stop words and we don't really want them in our data set we just need the major words there. So having these present can impact a training accuracy because they are the most common words and they are non distinct. Also note that br is included in this list because it's commonly used in this uh, corpus as br html tag so we have this br html tag and what are we going to do is we are going to add it to the stop words as well as you can already see br is already in the stop word section right also you can update the code using beautiful soup to remove these html tags so we can just import beautiful soup from bs4 and just add the strings translation to remove the punctuation or html tags and all the stop words that are given in the list right so we have here imported from bs4 we'll import beautiful soup and we have imported string as well because we're gonna work with some punctuations here so here's a list of stop words table equals string dot make trans given in inverted commas comma and string dot punctuation right so we'll understand what the table is doing here but first let's just go through the code right this whole code is the similar as one we have already seen here it is as similar as that right so sentence equals string given item of text dot decode into lower so converting all the text in the sentences to the lower case right so even it's in upper case we're converting into the lower case we're just decoding it so we pass in the sentences to beautiful soup to search for any punctuation or in the case as we have seen for any html tags we are searching for html tags using beautiful soup next is we uh, write down sentence equals soup dot get text we we'll get the text and words equals sentence dot split we have to split the text because we need to get each and every word out of it 
and we have opened uh, there's a for loop here where word in words and word dot translate table so once we call table so it just finds any punctuation if it's present or not so if word is not in the stop word means it's very useful word for our sent from our sentence that we add just we add it to the filtered sentence and then we append those filtered sentence into imdb sentences that we have already uh, launched here the list is already here right so then the, it's similar that we've already done that we call tokenizer fit on text and text to sequences and finally print the word index right note that the sentences are covered to convert it to lower case before processing because all stop words are stored in the lower case so this is the one reason why we were converting it from lower case to lower case here uh, as you can see here that in we were converting it to dot lower case all the sentences were covered converting to the lower case because all our stop words are in the lower case then this is our whole word index as printed you can see that this is much cleaner than before there's always a improvement room for improvement so as you can see in the word index now there is no uh the it am you can't see that right there are less common words towards the end of the nonsensical so often reviewers would combine words for example with a dash so saying annoying conclusion so there is a dash or a slash between them so we have to strip of the punctuation so there's a small code for that and it's very easy to understand so what are we going to do is we have the sentences and we are going to just replace the punctuation with some spaces around it so as you can see uh, in the first inverted commas there is a there is a simple comma but in the next one there is space between the comma and the inverted commas right so we have we've added spaces so that these characters can be identified individually and can be added to the stop words or the punctuations this turn combined words with like him or her into him space slash space and her which then had the strip slash stripped out and got tokenized into words so slash was stripped out and we just got him and her this might lead to better training results later now that you have a tokenizer for the corpus you can encode your sentences for example simple sentences we were looking at the early in the chapter will come out like this so as earlier we were seeing that sentences were given like today is a sunny day today is a rainy day it is it a sunny today is it sunny today so these were the sentences and we were just converting these sentences or text to sequences and when we print the sequence we would get like something like this right if we decode these you'll see that the stop words are dropped and you get the sentences and coding like as today today sunny day right so let's just try and, and decode these so let's take this one the last one because it's the smallest one so when we decode this 5229516 it comes out to be sunny today right but the actual uh, word was is actual sentence was is it sunny today and we got sunny today in return so we have dropped is we have dropped it and we have dropped question mark right if you want to do this in code you can create a new dictionary with reversed keys and values so what can we do here is that we are just decoding now so we have encoded first and now we are going in reverse order so there is a dictionary where value comma key for key comma value in tokenizer dot word underscore index dot item so we are calling the um, keys and the values of the dictionary or uh, where the words and the uh, simultaneous decoded code or, or the sequence was written and then we say decoded underscore review colon uh, inverted commas dot join reverse underscore word underscore index dot get i for i in sequence from zero so we get the decoded review here 
saying that it's a sunny day right so i am using the imdb subwords data sets so what are we going to do is imdb uh, subwords are like we, there is a couple of pre processed imdb data sets using subwords so tfd has all, also contains that so here we don't have to break up the sentences by word they have already been split up into subwords for you so here we don't have to split the words or do anything they are already done for you using subwords is a happy medium between splitting the corpus into individual letters and individual words and this ap approach can often be useful very effectively to train a classifier for language these data sets also include the encoders and decoders used to split the and encode the corpus to access them you can call tfds.load and pass it imdb reviews slash subwords 8k or use subwords 32k like this so we're not not doing anything new it's just same that we get the train data test data and we use tfds.load but this time we are just passing it imdb reviews slash subwords 8k and we have defined the split as uh, train and test and supervised equals to and with info so that we get the information next is that you can access the encoder on the info object like this this will help you to see the vocab size so we'll see the vocab size here so how many words are there so encoder equals info dot feature that is text dot encoder print vocab size dot format encoder vocab dot vocab size we are just printing the vocabulary size using the uh, encoder and dot vocab size this will output 8185 because the vocabulary in this instance is made up of 880 8185 tokens if you want to see the list of subwords you can get it with the encoder dot subwords property so here we are just printing encoder dot subwords so these are the subwords some things you might notice here are that sub stop words punctuation and grammar are all in the corpus as as are html tags like br spaces are represented by underscores and so the first token of the word is the right so spaces are also uh, represented here using underscores should you want to encode a string you can also do with the encoder like this so if you want to encode a string we just you would use we have a sample string here this one we just say encoded string then call encoder dot encode and pass in the string so this this is how the, our whole string will be encoded and finally we can print the encoded string as well the output would be this so i can say that using a uh, encoder it's pretty easy to just to encode a string rather than using any other word so your five words are encoded into seven tokens to see the tokens you can use the subwords property on encoder which returns an array it's a zero based so whereas dot in today was encoded as 6427 is the 6427th item in the array so what there is that if you want to uh, get the word today or dot so it you have to write for 6426 even if it's encoded at 6427 because we are approaching an array so if you want to decode you can use decode method of the encoder so first we encoded our string and now we just going to decode it using encoder dot decode right so first where we were we actually decoded encoded it to uh, these all numbers now we just passing these all numbers to the decoder and get the exact thing like today is sunny day the later lines will have an identical result because the encoded string despite its name is a list of tokens just like the one that is hard coded on the next line right
Next up is getting the text from a CSV file. While TFDS has a lot of great data sets, it does not have everything. So there are some times when you have to get the data from outside and it's in the form of CSV files. So uh, over the couple of next chapters, we'll just use CSV on Twitter data and it's also called sentiment analysis in the text data set. And for your sake, we are just using emotions that are reduced to positive or negative, that is binary classification. So we'll say either the sentiment was positive or either the sentiment was negative. Right. We, it's actually easy to use and very straightforward. So Python also gives us some CSV libraries to handle CSV files straightforward. And in this case, the, the data is stored in two values per line. So the first number is 0 or 1, denoting sentiment to be positive or negative. And the second is a string containing the text. Right. So how are we going to read it? Everything else is just the same. The method of reading the CSV file is just different. So the rest is same. We are just going to import CSV. And with open, just in, embed this whole thing here that it's the location of the CSV file having an encoding of UTF-8 and open it as a CSV file, right? Then we use reader equals CSV.reader that CSV file we are reading with the delimiter of comma. And that's it. The rest is the almost same because the reader has the label. There are two things. One is the in the CSV file, one is the sentences and the other is the labels, right? So we append the labels into the labels only. That is row of zero int any integer that is zero or one that will be into the la that will go directly to the labels and simultaneously we append in the sentences. So sentence equal low row of one dot lower. So convert everything into uh, lower case because the stoppers do not contain anything from upper case. So we convert everything into lower case. And we bring in some gaps between the punctuation so that it's easier to remove. Finally, we use be beautiful soup to just get rid of the punctuation. We split the words and get the filtered sentences using word equals word dot translate table. And this is all the sort of things that we have already done that we find the words in the stop words. And it, if it's not the, we just get, we just add it to the filtered sentence, right? And finally, we append those sentences to the sentences list that we already have initiated in the starting. So this gives us around 35,327 sentences, right? So what are we going to do next is there are these are the total sentences around 35k, right? What are we going to do is we are going to get we are going to just get those 28k of training set and rest will give it to the test set. So here we are just dividing our whole 35k sentences into training and test sets, right? So let the, let's just separate it here. So training size is 28k. So what are we going to do here is sentences from zero to the training size would be given into training sentences and the rest are given into the testing sentences using slicing technique in the Python as we have already, we already know it. So similar things is done to the training labels and test labels as well. Now that we have the test and the training set, you create a word index from it. So word index is just tokenizer as we already know. So we are just create a vocabulary of 20k words. Maximum length would be 10 sentences and we truncate the longer sentences and use padding at the short end, right? So vocabulary is 20,000, max length is 10. Truncate type is post, padding is also post and OV underscore TOK is for OV. So any word that is not in the stop word uh, is given the OV tokenization, right? So tokenizer equals tokenizer and given the number of words and OV token and just fit on text. So these convert the sentences into sequences. This is done. Then we just use word index is tokenizer dot word index and we'll be able to print them also. Then is training sequences. So we convert text to sequences using sending the training sentences. And finally padding, we just add the padding to uh, training data because uh, since the sentences length would vary and we need padding there, right? 
so all these things and the parameters that we have already de defined before we are using them here you can inspect the results by looking at the training sequences and the pad training padded right for example here we print the first item in the training se sequence so this is the first item in the training sequence it would be different for you and the max and how it's padded in the maximum length of 10 so right this is a, a training sequence 0 and the training padded sequence of also 0 so you can see that this is whole padded and the, there is a post padding of two zeros so it actually becomes a length of 10 right also you can inspect the word index and ov gets the first position as usual there are many words here you might want to consider to get rid of at as stop words such as like don't it's always useful to inspect the word index and get started with the json files right so what is a json file it's actually short form for javascript object notation and is use, usually used for data interchange uh, that happens on the web applications it's human readable and designed to use name or value pairs as such it's particularly well suited for labeled text a quick search of Kaggle datasets for JSON yields 2500 results and the popular one is a Stanford's question answering dataset called Squad and it's stored in JSON. So what, what's the simple syntax of a JSON is and how a ob JSON object is represented. So as Lawrence Maroney gives his own example, his first name is and last name is stored something like this. And they also say that in JSON, it also supports arrays. So the array starts here and it can, it gets over at the end of this Python list here, right? So you can also do like this. And also you can incorporate arrays into the JSON file and it's very valid only as it's done here. So you can see that inside the JSON file, inside the list, of objects there is also another array right a smaller data set that's stored in JSON and a lot of fun to work with as the news headlines data set for the sarcasm detection so we're gonna work with this data set now that is a sarcasm detection data set which has the headlines so I just tell you what all things that data set contains is so this is the file structure so if it's sarcastic or not given a value of 0 or 1 so it will be an integer the second value would be the headline so it's a string string containing the headline and the third one would be a url containing the article link right so it will be a string only but in a url format the data set contains 26000 items one per line so there are 26000 lines of data to make it more readable in python i've created a version that encloses these in an array so it can be read as a single list so let's just get reading json files so python's json library makes reading json files simple so we just have to call on the libraries already present in python to read json files Given that JSON uses name value pairs, you can index the content based on the name. So it's just like a dictionary where there is a value and there is a key. Simultaneously in JSON, there is a name and there is a value and you can call on to the content based on name only also if you know it. So for example, for sarcasm dataset, you can create a file handle to the JSON file open it with json library have an iterable go through read each line by line and get the data item using the name of the field here's the code so we import json we open the file as f and we just load it into our data store next we just say that for item in data store sentences go into the sentence list that is item headline because we know the 
name so we are calling by name we know the name is headline we are calling by name dot lower converting the sentences into the lower case then we know that the label name for the labels is, is sarcastic and we call it by name again and for article link we also call it by name this makes it simple to create list of sentences and labels as you have done throughout this chapter and then tokenize the sentences you can also do pre-processing on the fly as you read a sentence removing stop words html tags punctuation and more as we've already done before right so here's the code again what are we going to do is we are just in the sentences as we have done before these are the lists that we require we we'll ha we have three uh, main parameters in this data set sentences labels and urls and for the sentences only we need to replace the punctuation so we are using this code again that this one so replacing the uh, commas with spacing around them and punctuation beautiful soup and then splitting and getting the filtered sentence till this thing everything is same the two lines that are added are using this one these last two lines so what are we going to do is we're just going to append the item with the name only because we know it and we have learned that the property of json file is we can call by name so labels dot append item of is sarcastic so we're calling by name and appending to the labels and urls list as before we split the training into uh, the whole data set into training and test sets so if you want to use 23000 of 26000 items so there are 20 total 26000 items we are getting 23000 for our training and the rest go, 3000 goes into our testing label testing sentences right so this is the whole same thing using splicing technique in python and finally to tokenize it we are using the same text again we're just adding 20000 vocab size the length is same the truncation is post padding is post and ov token is ov again so it's same we just run the tokenizer pass in the parameters just do fit on text and just tokenize dot word index we'll finally print the word index as before so there is nothing new we've already done this before and the output would be something like this so we see that uh, this is the similar looking code and there are no stop words here so i hope that this is much clear now as we have run through the same code multiple number of times so it's easier to understand finally we reach the summary of this chapter 5 uh, in this chapters or the earlier chapter we learned use images to build a classifier uh, images by definition are highly structured you know their dimensions you know their format but in the text it's a bit difficult to work through it because usually the text is unstructured and you don't know the kind of punctuation and then a kind of tags it's used in and there might be some time that we might miss on to the uh, those stop words okay so it's often unstructured and can contain undesirable content such as formatting instructions doesn't always contain what you want and often has to be filtered to remove nonsensical or irrelevant content in this chapter you saw how to take the text convert it into numbers using tokenization then explore how to read and filter text in a variety of formats given these skills you are now ready to take the next step and learn how meaning can be inferred from words and the first step is understanding the natural language so we have done with this chapter we have understood how uh, we actually know understand natural language processing we understood padding we understood tokenization we understood how to read a json file a csv file work with two three different data sets and now we are ready to take the next step to learn how meaning can be derived from the words but before we get started with the next chapter chapter 6 we'll be getting to the code and understand what kind of code we have already learned and understood in the chapter and just take a practical approach to that
right so let's just hop on to the collab for that so here's the collab and it's covered in chapter 5 only i'll be uploading this whole code into our github and you can understand and get to this code and in the description of this video you will find the link to the github also so let's get started here what are we going to do is we'll get started with the imdb dataset simple and we are not using the whole imdb dataset we're just using a part of it so we import tensorflow dataset as usual with tf dot as tfds then we import beautiful soup and string these are whole stoppers you can just copy paste them you will get them easily online right so next is removing punctuation otherwise a stop word would uh, followed by a comma won't be spotted because right we have already learned about it so is the table equals string dot make trans that is uh, we pass in a string dot punctuation then imdb sentences this list we get the training data tfds dot as numpy and tfds dot load we load the imdb reviews data set and split into the train then we iterate through it and decode it and convert into a lower string because our stop words do not contain any word that is in uppercase so we have to convert it into lowercase and then there is these are replace statements we have already done and learned about it and finally we just use beautiful soup to remove the punctuations and we translate it and if we see if the word is not in the stop words just append it to our imdb sentences right and then when our whole data set is loaded we just get to the tokenizers so because we have the sentences now we have to convert it into tokens and then to sequences so here is a text to sequences one and we print the word dot index here you can see movie has index of one next is reversing so once we have encoded it and if we want to check if we have encoded right we have to decode it so here is the decoding also so just using a dictionary to decode right next up is our imdb subwords data set so we use imdb reviews slash subwords 8k split into train and test load it and use the encoder to encode the features dot text right the vocabulary size we encode it and we get the vocabulary size then we encode the subwords that we print the encoded subwords and finally we can see that there is some space after the so these are the encoded subwords and finally uh, the sample string is today sunny and we just convert it to the encode uh, to the encoded ones like this encoded string like this using encoder dot encode right so we print the encoder and just reversing it so that we can decode it we use encoder dot decode so we have the whole this one this string encoded string we're just passing it through the decoder so that we get the encoded string so our original string was today is a sunny day and after encoding it became this and once we decoded this we got today is a sunny day again right next is getting text from csv files that we have just done so we um, got our imports pad sequence and tokenizer then we got our strings and stop words we got beautiful soup we just loaded our csv file we appended labels and sentences we converted into lower forms and then we got our filtered then sentences and we appended to the original sentences list then we divided into training and test sets we got the vocabulary maximum size truncation type and padding type and finally we tokenized our data then converted into sequences and printed the word index next is a sarcasm data set that we just read how we read the json files so everything right same seems the same just reading the json files we have to use json.load 
rest is just the same there is no new thing added to it we have just copy pasted this so many times because the code remains the same right then we just print this length of sentences that's the total sentence then we divide it into training and testing we add the vocab size use the tokenizer write down and print the word index so this is the whole thing that the process remains the same only the approach to get the data from the file or read the data from the file it only changes and that's a very short code that you have to write down to just get your code so i hope this code and chapter 5 is understood to you all and i hope this videos are helpful to you do like these videos share these videos and you'll find the whole this code in our description just go to the link for our github and repository and you'll get the repository there with all the code of chapter 1 to chapter 5 and give it a look if you have any queries just write it in the comments or reach out to our twitter handle so thank you so much and keep learning